So I'm here uh, in town where I live and uh, this new place opened up and I'm kind of curious to see the, uh, what, it, what it's all about. Um, here I'll show you I'll show you what I'm talking about here. Here it is. It's it's called the Spirit of Halloween. And um, I'm kind of curious to see what this what spirit this is. And so I'm gonna go inside right now and we'll check it out. We'll see what kind of what spirit what spirit of Halloween is all about. So what did we see in the Spirit of Halloween store? Before I share what I saw there, I just want to share it with you uh, the history of Halloween for those of you that don't know what it is. You know the word holiday comes from holy day. So to, some, so to someone, a holiday is the holy day. And what we're looking at today is, is a Halloween a holy day for Christians. And if you look at the history of it, though the Catholic Church has Christianized Halloween, it is uh, by no means a Christian holiday. Uh, well, for those of you that don't know, um, Halloween comes from the holiday of Samhain, which comes from the British Isles in ancient times. And the Druid priests would, uh, they believed that as the year, you know, as the year is separated into two parts, the light part, which is this, this summertime where the harvests are growing, and it is separated into the dark part, which is what we're going into now, and this is uh, October 29th. Um, in, uh, as you can see, right now, we're coming to the dark part of the year. The, the days are shortening, shortening. Um, the trees are, the leaves are dying, the harvest is being taken because it's going to, you know, be dying too. And so they believe that the world is separated into two, two, two different times, the light and the dark. And so they believe that the souls of the dead on October 31st, on the night of October 31st, the veil was at its thinnest, separating the dead and the living. And so that the souls of the dead would be able to pass through the veil into the living and maybe harass or even cause harm to people. And so the Druid priests, to protect themselves from these uh, spirits, they would dress themselves up in ghastly outfits to fool the spirits into thinking that they were a spirit themselves. And so they'd take like things like animal skins and they would cover their faces and they would look like ghouls and, you know, really ghastly type costumes so that uh, they could fool the dead. And then they would go door to door looking for a human sacrifice like a young child or a virgin and if the parents of that family would give one of their children over to the druid priests then the priests would give them a carved a turnip with a carved face on it that was be lit up and so they would put that at their doorstep and that's telling the demonic uh, presence that they used to worship that uh, a sacrifice was given from this home and so the, the demon would pass over and not harm anybody in that house because they were willing to give a sacrifice. If the family did not give a sacrifice then the Jew priest would, would mark the house by, by writing a hex on their door or somewhere on that house and so then the demon, demonic presence would come and see that there was no uh, cooperation and so then they would uh, harass those people and, and maybe even somebody would die that night and then the druid priests would, would take these children and, and young virgins and they would throw them into a great big huge fire that they would have created and the fire would be so primed so hot that there'd be nothing left of those people but bones and so they called this a bone fire and you know as time goes on words change and evolve and so now if you ever went to a big um, party out in the woods somewhere and people were created this big huge fire, what do they call them? Well, we call them bonfires. The words just changed and evolved from a bonfire. That's where it comes from. Later on, you know, the, the, 
pil the pilgrims of uh, America, you know, they fled that country of Europe because of uh, persecution. Persecution from the church, their own church. And um, they could not practice uh, freedom of religion without being uh, persecuted all the time, like for physically. Uh, just look at it's another whole history and a whole another study right there, but uh, it's not too far to to learn about how the church uh, actually killed a lot of people. Uh, maybe I'll do another video on that sometime. But uh, so the Pilgrim Fathers they fled Europe because they wanted freedom of religion, and that was so what was so appealing about America was that it, there was no huge uh, Catholic church that was willing to. Uh, persecute and so they could come here and have freedom of religion and they instituted that right away like as soon as they have governments and they instituted the freedom of religion and that is that is what has been so great here ever since and so when the pilgrim fathers came here they did not bring Halloween with them they did not want anything to do with Halloween they were totally against and they knew what it was all about and they were against it but over time like I said as time goes on, people lose uh, the history. They lose uh, the reasoning of why things were avoided or why things are done. And so in 1845, 1846, a potato famine hit um, in Ireland. And a lot of Roman Catholic people rushed over to America. And specifically, they came to New York. And in New York, they brought Halloween with them. They brought Halloween with them, and in a short period of time, it was practiced. You know, Christian people put aside. It's just a fun thing to do because it started out in innocently. Um, but as we see in a few minutes, it's not that innocent anymore. So I'm going to the store here now, and the first thing I come upon is uh, severed heads with screwdrivers stuck through them. Blood everywhere. Um, couldn't believe it. Just right as okay. I walked in, like screwdrivers in there, and a uh, bunch of heads—not one or two heads—with hooks through them. You know, a screwdriver head, and then I come up to the section with the severed arms, severed arms and bloody leg section, um, blood all over. You know, feet hanging there. Come with a, a sever, like a head with the top missing from bowls and shot. Shot glass skulls. Um, oh yeah, I saw a cup there. Tips on how to survive the zombie holocaust. You know, crazy stuff in here. This is the spirit of Halloween. This is uh, filled with ghastly things. There's a... Uh, I keep walking and... As I come... You know, you see different masks and big spiders. You know, things that we used to see uh, years ago when we were kids, like spiders and things like that. But, uh, oh, there's a demonic hat rack for your hats that talks to you. Or, and you can hear in the background all the screaming and ghastly, terrified screams. And there's ghosts and cobwebs and more skulls. Um, yeah, the Grim Reaper type things. Well, and then it comes to this guy, zombie guy, holding a severed head in his hand, saying like supposedly funny things. I didn't think it looked too funny myself. He's got a bloody knife in his hand. You know, what years ago, oh, there's this uh, zombie with a shotgun blast to her stomach, missing an arm, blood everywhere. It looked really horrible. Like, you know, as far as I remember, it looks pretty real compared to what we used, we grew up with. But uh, as I was saying, uh, these things I used to think maybe was funny years ago, I don't think it's too funny anymore, you know, as you look, you see all these demonic children, you know, going through zombie stuff and all that is one thing, but creating children to look like this, that is a total different story here, there's, oh there's a chicken, like, like demonic children, I can't believe this, like, then you come to this section, blood all over the walls, zombie girl sitting there, and uh, a head coming out of the toilet. I want to come to the daycare of uh, zombie children here. Craziness, like, 
I can't believe what I can't believe that's when I walked in here. I knew it was gonna be bad, but I didn't think it was gonna be this bad. I guess I'm kind of naive these days. More children hanging from a tire. More zombie kids and oh man. I don't even, I can't believe what it must be like to go out on this night here and see what this is all about. This must be a horrible experience going through Halloween. Bringing your children to go door to door and see this stuff. Like, do you really want to expose your children to this? Like, come on, like, oh, a kid eating his own foot? This stuff was, this place, this section here was so bloody, I couldn't even believe it. Oh, more limb eating zombie boy. So as I keep walking here, um, there's various makeup things and stuff that's, that's making yourself up look like a crate, I don't know. Look like a zombie, I guess. Different outfits. No, just by hearing the sounds in this store was enough for me to to, to really know what this uh, spirit of Halloween is all about. Just by hearing the sounds, I didn't even have to look. If I was a blind person walking in this place, I would know what the spirit of Halloween was right from just hearing this place. Oh yeah, look at this. An angel child, and then there's a demonic angel right next to it. Uh, I don't know if you saw that, but that's craziness. You know, as Christians, we believe that God's word is the word of God, that it is a direct communication between humans and him so that he can perfectly convey his will towards us, that he may be a constant guide of how we should live our lives and what to avoid for our own safety. And it is for that reason that we should not take God's word lightly. If he says we should not partake in something, then we should not do it. It is just a, a question of rebellion if we do. God's word says, For whoever finds me finds life, and obtains favor from the Lord. But he who sins against me wrongs his own soul. All those who hate me love death. These are harsh words coming from the word of God today. But I wouldn't take that lightly, because what, what do we see? At Halloween, we see death everywhere, and people love it. And so what did the Word of God say? It said that all those who hate me, I'm talking about God, they love death. you got to remember, this isn't me saying this. This is the Word of God. If you love death, then you hate God. For you are once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, finding out what is accept, acceptable to the Lord, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. You know, I can really appreciate this uh, scripture because I see the days are evil today. But going from the beginning... We were once darkness, and yes, we were. As Christians, we were once living in the dark. As was I, you know. I loved this holiday. I loved the zombies. I loved playing the games of the zombies, you know, like the Resident Evil games and all that. I loved those things. I loved the movies, and I used to laugh at them. But trust me, I'm not laughing anymore because God has brought his light into my, into my eyes. And he has shine, shone his brilliant light around me and shown me, taught me, led me, guided me and said, look at what this is all really about. And I don't want you taking part in it. The scripture says, to have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what I'm trying to do here today is to expose the darkness behind Halloween. Because it is a true, truly dark holiday. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. So it says, don't imitate evil. 
Don't even imitate it. It says, He who does good is loved of God, but he who does evil has not see, even seen God. The scripture says, Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. So here it is saying, Do not deceive yourselves by saying, Well, we don't dress our children as scary outfits and we don't uh, approve of that. You know, do not deceive yourselves by trying to talk yourself into uh, it being okay that you uh, let your children practice these things. Because it says evil company corrupts good habits. Which means, you know, you take part in evil things, you, you, you too are going to become evil. So you're going to do evil. And it says, awake to righteousness and do not sin, for some do not have the knowledge of God. It says, wake up. Because the people that you're doing these things with, the, the holiday you're practicing it, it's saying, wake up, and because they do not have the knowledge of God, but you do. You shouldn't be doing these things. I now send you to open their eyes, in order to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who are sanctified by faith in me. And that's what I hope to do today. I hope to turn your eyes from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God. Because you can receive forgiveness and you can turn away from these things still. And that is my hope for you today. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So here it's uh, harsh words against a Christian, again, if they want to follow Halloween. This is basically saying that, you know, you've been in the faith for so long. You've been a, a follower of me, Jesus, for so long. You've been a Christian. That you should be a teacher by now. But you don't understand my character. And so you should have been... You should have been eating solid food by now. You should have been a grown adult in the faith by now. But you're not. So right now you need milk. You need someone to, to spoon feed you. You need someone to feed you. Because you're a babe in Christ saying solid food people who eat solid food are of full age because by reason of their use their faith that their senses can discern spiritually what is evil and what is good because they use that spiritual discernment on a regular basis just like when you feed a child on a regular basis they grow up and eventually they'll need solid food because they've their bodies have adapted and they now need that solid food to grow to keep growing it's the same thing spiritually this is got what god's word is saying is like if you use your spiritual discernment on a regular basis and you read your bible and pray on a regular basis that god will give you spiritual discernment he will give you the truth he'll he'll show you the light of anything that you come in contact with whether it be in the movies or on TV the music, anything like anything in life you will see what is good and what is evil do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers for what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness and what communion has light with darkness and what accord has Christ with Belial it's another word for the devil or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? Therefore come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. What does have light to do with darkness? Well, darkness is there for people who cannot see. But when you put a light in that dark room, it lights up that dark room so you can see what it's, what's in there. 
and that's what I'm hoping to do with this um, video is to bring a light to the darkness and so you can actually see for the first time or convict you that of something you already know that there's something wrong with Halloween and we shouldn't follow that. Not only are we rebelling ourselves, but we are teaching our children to rebel as well against God. And if we are going to rebel in a small thing, then trust me, we will rebel in big things. It says, what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And so we shouldn't take part in unbelieving holidays or holy days. As Halloween is a holy day to wit Wiccans, or I say witches, if you want to put, put it that way, and Satanists. I don't recommend you reading the Satanic Bible, but in there it does say that Halloween is one of their holy days. Uh, one of their actually biggest holidays of the year. God says that for Christians to come out from among the unbelievers and be separate. That means to be different. Do not touch what is unclean. And the promise is that he will be a father to us and we will be his children. Isn't that a great promise? When you turn away Halloween, you're not just blindly turning it away and uh, you're not getting a blessing from it. You are going to receive a blessing from that. You'll have people look at you like you're crazy and uh, that you are making a big thing out of nothing. But I would rather have God's blessing than to have man's approval, wouldn't you? Therefore, having these promises, beloved... Let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Open your hearts to us. So here Paul is pleading with the people to cleanse themselves from all fil filthiness of the flesh and of spirit. And that is also what I'm asking here today. And you know, Paul here, he feels bad, like he, as we read on, he feels that people will think badly of him for being so bold and uh, speaking out against whatever they were doing in his epistle, and his letter. And I myself feel that same burden that I do not, even though I might offend people, I, I'm, that is not my goal to offend you. My goal is to, to show you something that might be uncomfortable for you, but I, it is the truth. Like it is, it's not hard to see. If you have two eyes and, and you're willing to see in the light, that I'm showing you, it's not hard to see at all. It's only if you want to take that light and put it out and stand in the room, dark room. That is the only explanation I have. And so Paul keeps going and says, We have wronged no one. We have corrupted no one. We have cheated no one. I do not say these things to condemn, for I have said before that you are in our hearts to die together and to live together. And so he's saying, I haven't done anything wrong to you. and I haven't cheated you. I haven't corrupted anybody. I am doing these things. I'm not condemning you for following whatever you're doing. But I'm saying these things because you're in our hearts that we love you. And we don't want you to die. We, want, we, want you to, we don't want you to die in the things you're doing. And then he continues. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, in my case this video, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it. For I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice not that you are made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you are made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance, leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And so here he's saying, like, I'm sorry that I had to write this letter. I'm sorry I had to make this video. But because of the deceptions in this world, I have to because I love people and I don't want them to uh, suffer because of the things they are doing unknowingly. But you know what? I don't regret making this video, even though I, I don't want to hurt people's feelings. But my whole purpose is to reach people so that you may become sorry for the things that you love and you know they're wrong so that your sorrow may lead you to repentance for God that you may get on your knees and say I'm sorry God for 
loving these things. I know they're wrong. Please take them from me. I need your strength to do so. Because repentance leads you to salvation. It leads you to salvation. There is no salvation without repentance. They come hand in hand. You need to take hold of that sacrifice and accept it. But accept Jesus' sacrifice for your sins. That is the only way to salvation. And the sorrow of the world produces death. You know, the world that has no care about Jesus will lead to death. And that's a, a, sad, a sad truth, but that's just the truth of it all. So, to end this video, I just want to say that there is hope, you know, that... Though the world is dark and it is, people will look down on you for, for taking a stand against um, this holiday because people will look at you like you're uh, creating something out of nothing, but there is a big, huge spiritual danger for doing this. Um, and you know, I just want to put up, put up this quote as I go, and maybe it'll make you think, even if you don't believe. The scriptures didn't touch your hearts or anything. I want you to sh to see the other side, and I don't like quoting um, the other um, power. You know, there's God and there's also a dark power. I don't like quoting that other power, but sometimes for people's benefit, pe so I can wake them up. I need to. Sometimes God's word, you know, it speaks softly, and sometimes people are asleep and they won't want to wake up, and sometimes God's word is is cuts to the heart and makes people sit up and take notice but other people will sleep through that as well um, sometimes I'll do I'll quote these things be, to, to really shake you to really shake you up and wake you up so I'm going to put up as I close this video I'm going to put up this quote from Anton LaVey the founder of the Church of Satan and you know God's word is telling the truth because if he can, if Anton LaVey, the founder of the Church of Satan, says this, how can you deny all those counsels that the Lord has given us about how to avoid this holiday and why we should? Um, it is right there in front of you. So as I close the video, I say, God bless you. Um, I'm going to pray over this video for everyone that watches it, that you may see the darkness of Halloween and that you may turn away from it. Until next time, well, God bless you.